Okay, um, one quick thing. I guess I'm still not familiar enough with this. I don't see Ann or John. I you, don't, see you. you don't see us? Well, I see you when you speak, but you uh, come up. I see the four of us, Bill, Lou, <laughs> Tiffany, and I in small boxes on the bottom, and then you're the rest of the screen. I just, uh, you should see a setting that says gallery view. If uh, maybe up in the upper right, if you push that, it should open it up to everybody. Wait, I think I saw it. There he is. Okay, I've got it. Good. Thank you. Hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. I had a notification about my audio, but it seems to be fine. So good. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Whenever you're ready, John. Okay, we'll start. Uh, so I want to state that this will be a full meeting of the Marin Community Service District Park and Recreation Commission pursuant to Executive Order N-29-20 issued by the Governor of the State of California. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically via the internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. Instructions for how to make public comment during meeting. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. So we have a quorum. I will um, call the meeting to order. The first item we have is uh, we're looking for an adoption of the agenda that we have as presented. Motion to adopt. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Um, uh, we have any members of the public? Yes. For public comment? I don't see anything for comment, no. Okay, then uh, item number three, draft minutes of our <coughs> August 25th, 2020 PNR Commission meeting. We're looking for approval of those uh, draft minutes. You have time to review them. Yeah, I, um, I don't have any questions. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Oh, so, uh, so, okay, first and seconded, John and Ann. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, item number four, draft minutes of the September 8th, 2020 board meeting. This is a item we will review. Any comments or questions on that? Okay, no comments or questions? No. Uh, then we will uh, move on to item number five, the overview. John, of the as you go through, don't forget to ask for public comment. All right, um, public comment. You don't have any, there hasn't been any, but you should just all the same reminder that uh, the public's allowed to comment on other items. On each item, right. Okay, then uh, moving forward, overview of the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Um, Eric, this is something you can... Sure, yeah, I can take over. Uh, this was based on a request from the last meeting. I tried to give a, a pretty broad yet detailed overview uh, in a written form. So you got about two and a half pages of a staff report there. I think it's probably just easiest for me rather than regurgitating everything I have in writing is to ask, uh, is there any questions or comments based on this or information that you wished was included uh, that wasn't. Not everybody at once though, because I, 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 it gets me confused. I think the like, uh, comment I would make is that uh, I had someone come to my door and examine my front yard. And, and I guess the question that my neighbors have asked me that I told them I'm not sure of is that the property owner is responsible for abatement, but is there any uh, financial support 
from this ordinance? Um, so right now, those site visits, you know, the property visits are really geared more on an educational front, even though we do have some avenues by which to uh, site, it is more on an educational level. Now, in terms of like grants that come through the Wildfire Prevention Authority, they, uh, they haven't started that yet, but they have moved, and it's definitely something that their board has talked about, but they have moved more towards, uh, they have allocated a lot of funding to Fire Safe Marin, who has organized a lot of uh, chipper days. So one of the things uh, that that allows is if, you know, property owners are able to remove the, uh, you know, any excess or flammable vegetation, um, and then they, the, uh, via a chipper day, like we had a few weeks ago, they will come through, chip it, and haul it away free of charge. Uh, I just received notice yesterday that we do have another chipper day that has been scheduled for October 8th. So I'm actually gonna be pushing that information out to the community this week, and they're also going to follow up on some of those specific residences uh, that kind of had a lot of uh, concern. So I don't know of, to answer your question, funding that is directly available, John, to uh, fund, you know, the actual, you know, like hiring somebody to come out and help them clear the vegetation. But once, if that part can get handled, they will uh, chip it and haul it away free of charge, which is, you know, obviously another expense and time consuming and everything else. Um, so that's where that is now. The other thing I can tell you on this too is uh, literally last week at the MWPA board meeting, they formally hired their first executive officer, a gentleman named Mark Brown, who comes from as the deputy fire chief of Marin County. He's well versed in all of the agencies and all of the concerns. He was, uh, sounds like the unanimous pick amongst 81 total applications that they received uh, and a process that took several months and was led by a recruiting firm. Um, so I expect once he gets started uh, next month on October 1st, I believe, that you're going to start to see a lot more things start to come together in terms of putting together some of the grant opportunities and things like that that might be able to help offset some of uh, these as is written into the actual ordinance. So it's, uh, you know, they move fast in some areas and not as fast in others, but now that they have their first dedicated staff person in there, I expect to see it uh, rather than people trying to fill in that position, um, becoming much more communicative um, as well as uh, starting to fulfill even more of the needs and the desires of the voters. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if uh, this instance that I was referring to was an elderly woman that doesn't have the means to do it herself and She's concerned about the cost that, uh, you know, if they could incorporate the AmeriCorps group that's doing some of the around the edges of the uh, open space into the public property or the private properties, that would be interesting to know. So. Yeah, I, uh, I might be able to follow up on that a little bit later after I, uh, I'll talk to the, the fire chief, um, Chief White. My, the AmeriCorps group that they had um, their term ended, but I believe that they are trying, if not have already succeeded in bringing out another crew. And they certainly did do some of that for some of these types of instances. Um, so I can follow up uh, with the chief and then I'll try to pass along some information to you directly, John. Okay. Any other comments from the commission? So are we going to be applying for any new projects or are the projects that we're doing kind of already, we're already, we've already passed that and now we're in action mode? Is that correct? Yeah, at this point in time, yes. So we're just trying, the projects that have already been approved, some have been completed, some are kind of in progress, um, all have been started. And then, you know, just really waiting to see exactly how many hours um, and expense go into that. So that way we know what we might have left for this fiscal year. Okay. A lot of this is done kind of contract hourly work through AmeriCorps. They have set day rates per person. 
Um, and we've estimated it out, but until we actually know how long it takes and what the working trail is uh, from a time perspective, then we'll have a, a answer on how much of the initial 64,000 uh, that is allocated to our agency. Keeping in mind, all of that money is coming in in arrears. None of that is coming up front. So I guess, uh, Eric, my question is about the process. Um, you said these projects have been approved. Um, are these projects in open space? Um, yeah, you can see where they are on the, the last page of my uh, report. Listed out the very specific ones that we did that included the goat grazing as well as some of the mechanical uh, and contract uh, follow-up work. Um, as well as, uh, you know, in open space, all that directly border along the WUI and residential properties that we were focusing on the, you know, the kind of highest uh, identified risk and hazard areas, which included, you know, basically from Queenstone Fire Road, you know, everything along that large swath of open space, all the way from the county facilities down Idleberry, stretching all the way around um, to Blackstone Canyon. So when, when were these when were these projects were these projects ever brought to this commission? No, these projects weren't brought anywhere. Um, these projects were turned around in a matter of a week or two to put in front of the Wildfire Prevention Authority by their request because they wanted to have a, as basically the shovel ready projects move as quickly as possible for year one as quickly as possible after the formation of the wildfire prevention so I, I think that's the the essence of me wanting to bring this up was my concern around the process i feel like we are an advi a park advisory commission but we were not involved in this process at all and i understand the the need for urgency around this issue but it seems that this is a very large measure. Measure C is $20 million annually for Marin County, and this is a very significant um, lift annually. And it feels like if there's significant funds being identified for projects on our open space, that this commission ought to be involved in that process moving forward. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, John. There's, there was no time to involve in that based on the requests and the timelines uh, from the Wildfire Prevention Authority. It just could not, uh, we wouldn't have met their deadlines to get the projects approved by their board um, when everything kind of got started. Uh, keeping in mind also, the Fire Commission has a very heightened interest in this as well. Um, and this is what we discussed a couple meetings ago when I said, you know, getting both commissions together because to present them to one commission and then present them to another commission, um, you know, not to mention if this, you know, depending on what a scope of a project is, uh, eventually, you know, possibly to our board too. Uh, it just, we need a better economy of scale there, so to speak, in terms of communication and getting people on the same page. Um, and putting, you know, and, and con possibly conducting a joint meeting between the two commissions is what I suggested. Um, because as the fire commission, they certainly have a large uh, uh, interest in the fire prevention aspect of this as well. Um, you know, none of this is clear cutting. This is all kind of uh, very much prescribed maintenance, um, you know, kind of under the guidance of, uh, you know, as I put in there, the guidance and support from the fire department in terms of uh, fire prevention best practices. Right, but there's going to be significant vegetation projects that's going to impact Marinwood open space. So um, are you saying that moving forward now that that sense of urgency, you know, that's passed, we, we have these projects, but now moving forward, this commission will be involved in this decision making process? Yeah, well, I'm, yes, that's what I've been saying is that uh, you know, as we move forward and as they don't, you know, I'm trying to just get through these first initial projects, uh, we'll be able to have a much larger term of planning and identifying. Now, that said, you know, we've gone through this for a year and a half, well before the Measure C, and working with the veg management people and identifying kind of where these high risk areas are. Um, and even with that, you know, I get a lot of uh, communication from the public of people who want, you know, various things done, open space, uh, 
neighbors, um, you know, and trying to educate them a little bit on what is or what isn't going to be done out there is, and it always kicks up this time of year when you've got all of these massive fires and everything that are burning, that, you know, people start to uh, reassess the risk that uh, is naturally involved with, you know, purchasing or building a property that borders large swaths of forested open space. So my point being, you have a lot of interested parties in this. Well, right. And this commission, I think, is one of them. Yeah, I understand. Yep. I understand. And keeping in mind, our, our allocation is uh, not significant. I mean, $64,000 a year is uh, not going to accomplish a lot. Um, by the time it can, but as you know, you know, coming out and doing these major projects, you can chew through $64,000 in a matter of a, one, one small project eats up $64,000. That funding level is going to stay the same because the JPA funds haven't even, they haven't even really come in yet. But once the 20 million starts coming in annually, that, that number won't go up. Uh, it may in accordance with whatever CPI is written into the thing, but it's all based on a ratio of the whole. And we represent a very small ratio of the whole, just in terms of uh, residents and revenue generated. So, you know, 20% of what's generated from here comes back to us for this purpose. And that 20% is estimated to be about $64,000. Got it. Yep. So, so with that, Eric, when, when will the next, like, how, how do you imagine this process moving forward then? Um, well, any of my thoughts right now are really just kind of preliminary because everybody's been kind of so focused in, I would really uh, look at, you know, I, I think it's the, uh, you got to partner up with the fire department uh, in terms of the chief and his staff who are trained in this. And typically, I would say, you know, looking at things right around the beginning of the year to be started to be implemented prior to fire season and in the spring is ideally a time to start attacking some of these with maybe some cleanup work towards the end of summer uh, if funds and resources allow. But identifying projects um, really, in my ideal world, sometime uh, you know right around the beginning of a calendar year uh, as you're getting ready for the next round of you know the seasonals um, it seems to be the make the most sense now I also don't know that within the MPA MWPA uh, that they have identified a firm annual cycle either you know so we are at their mercy so to speak I mean it all depends on when they want plans submitted by so that they can then be approved by their board and we would want to kind of move in unison preceding that that uh, decision because we can suggest plans and submit uh, project ideas uh, but ultimately they need to be approved not by our board but by the MWPA board, which is a totally separate entity. Right, and conversely, for those projects to be approved, to be completed on our land, they need to be approved by our board. Um, not necessarily, that, we, that isn't a policy that we have in place that says our board has to approve vegetation management projects. I mean, ultimately staff are tasked with that. If we were looking at you know, some level of a, uh, of a massive project, then I would most likely bring that too. But when you're looking at, you know, especially on these smaller range projects, uh, you know, I, I think that's more of a staff function based on you know, the, the need and the resources available. So yeah, say, not, these aren't capital expenditures. This is maintenance. So, but who? Well, I, I guess it could be more than maintenance. It seems to me um, some of these projects could get big. I, I don't know that. I'm not saying they are. They could. So it seems like they could get into a realm of a project more than maintenance. But um, let's hypothetically say that there was a project that was floated. Uh, I don't. I don't know by who. By nobody on this commission. Nobody on our board. By 
um, the, somebody in the, the JPA. And it wasn't something that our community felt like we wanted to do. Who, who would make that decision? Well, that's an interesting question that I don't know that I have an ultimate answer for you, John. I think that would probably be a better question to pose to the authority itself. To the and, GPA? Yes. Yeah, and either through their operations committee or through their board or just directly to their staff once they get going because they also have a very large chunk for these types of projects that are going to be directed by them. Um, you know, these local funds are just funds that we are submitting the project ideas and it's almost a ministerial approval pro process for their board, you know, just based on safety, the criteria of what the money is supposed to be used. Yes, right. Um, but they have a much larger chunk, uh, significant. I mean, 60% of all of it stays within the JPA itself. And then that is spread out into these four models that I had put down. To answer your question, John, I don't know that they have an answer to it yet. Um, again, uh, they, and, they and I'm, got the, I'm go ahead. hopeful and not expecting that to be an issue, but... I don't know. What if, what if somebody that lives behind uh, open space, you know, gets word of a project that directly impacts a huge swath of vegetation behind their house and they're super upset about it and they start coming to this commission and our board and saying, we don't want this project. Do, do we have any authority? Like who has the authority to say not on Marinwood land? Uh, well, it's our property. We certainly uh, control and detail it. I mean, I would have to see what that is. Keeping in mind, again, you know, all of this is uh, you know, primarily vegetation management uh, for the realm of fire prevention. You know, so no, I, 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 get to, it. I get it, but I'm yeah, interested in the process. And this is an right. advisory committee, so I, I'm... Right, I'm, I don't know. I guess what I would wonder, right. too, is... is uh, you know, like in the open space district, this is, is this an issue that they've been bringing up there? Well, it's a, it's something we're sorting through is the process. And that's right. why I'm curious what our process is. We haven't even really, we're still working through it and we're, we're, we're working through it in good faith and, and in partnership, but it's, um, it's something that requires discussion because measure C is, is big. It's not small. Right. right, right. Well, and I guess that would be, you know, a discussion to trickle down from the JPA itself as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we could certainly, uh, you know, put a kibosh and say, hey, I, you know, we don't want this done here. But if, you know, there is a, a rational reason as to why they want to do this and it uh, is, you know, being touted as, a, a, a very wise fire prevention method and you had you know one neighbor said I don't want this in my backyard yet you had you know a hundred neighbors that also live right there that say no I want fire prevention in my backyard I mean it's just like anything you do John uh, no I, I, I get that I just I, it's the process though right like it's it's how it's all worked out that's that I'm curious about yeah they don't have that defined yet to my knowledge within the uh, MWPA Again, right. I'm hopeful that that's going to come through much better now that they finally have a staff. They're not trying to, you know, I mean, they're really just trying to piece together a large organization uh, that, you know, has 17 member agencies that affects the entire county with the exception of Tiburon and Belvedere. Right, right. Yep. No, and I, I, I get all that. It's just being formed. It's just being worked out. I think my ultimate yeah, I think you get my concern is around the process and in my desire to be kept informed through this commission about when and how we interface into that process, when, whenever sure. that's determined. Yeah, yeah, I, I just being very honest with you, John, I don't have that answer yet. Yeah, right. Uh, from an ops perspective, we've had two meetings. Right. Um, with another one coming up this week and the board was much more focused on hey, let's get some of these initial shovel-ready projects out of the way. None of ours were um, large projects, and, and they were all incredibly well-received uh, um, by those who were, you know, most directly impacted by them. 
um, you know, from the chipper day to, you know, some of the clearance and the goat grazing and everything else. Um, but they don't, they're figuring that out. Their board was much more, you know, they had to get their bylaws in place. They had to get their executive committee in place. They had to get an executive officer in place. They've met two or three times, I think. Um, so I, they were much more worried about the governance and administration of the agency. They get it started. So that way they had a solid foundation by which to build those processes. Right. Yeah, but there was a, a heightened sense of urgency that to your point was a little bit dismaying. I mean, literally like a week to say, hey, here's these forms we need filled out, turned around. What kind of shovel ready stuff do you do? Can you afford to do it up front on, in a, in, with funding in arrears? Um, what's your anticipated timeline on it, so on and so forth. And that was why we chose the areas that we chose and turned them around. I and mean, it wasn't completely in a vacuum. It was certainly done, you know, made with input from the fire chief, input from the uh, vegetation inspectors who were trained to do that kind of work. And we looked at all of our open space border areas and said, you know, this is the, the biggest area. You know, uh, another big area, um, that borders some of our residents, but isn't ours, is like up in Lucas Valley Estates, because all of that, you know, true open space property up there actually belongs to the county and not to us. Um, and I know CSA 13 did a little bit of work, but, you know, I'm hopeful that the, the JPA itself can coordinate, you know, larger projects that, especially where you have, you know, uh, like just if you look out Blackstone, you quickly go, you know, from property that's owned by the city of Nevada, property that's owned by us, property that's owned by the county. Um, then you've got, you know, that kind of weird CSA 13. You know, you have a lot of landowners converged in a very large amount of open space. And their main goal is to create that level of consistency so that practices are implemented consistently across the county so that, uh, the procedures and the strategies that they're using are implemented consistently across the county. And, you know, keeping in mind, to your point, you have two incredibly, uh, uh, sometimes varying different viewpoints on this, where you have people who look at the open space from one perspective of preservation and people who look at the open space more as a, as a massive fire risk um, and want to want to reduce fire risk while other people want to kind of preserve the open space. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I don't have the answer at this point in time. It's still incredibly new, um, but I'll certainly share that level of concern. And I'm sure it's not unique to us in the same way that, you know, the open space district and their commission is trying to think about it. <laughs> or all of the other 17 agencies. Yeah, and I think to your point, I, I just want to make sure that we have an opportunity to express our goals in regards to protection of open space and public safety and just get an opportunity to, to look at these plans as they come in. So, and I'm, I'm not expecting there to be much controversy around it. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, people are going to be really happy about it. Um, that, that we got funds to do this, especially with orange skies and smoke in the air. So I'm not expecting controversy, but I, I do, I've had experience in government where things get pushed through in the name of urgency that are not always good ideas. And um, that I get a little, my, my hairs stand up a little bit when, when people start talking about, well, we just had to push this through. And because I've seen some bad things happen. So I, yeah, these were these were pretty minor projects. I, I know. I know, I, I know that. I know that. But the process is important. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't disagree with you, John. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, the process for this initial round was out of our control too. Um, thanks. Thank you yeah, for your okay. thoughts, John. Uh, anything else from the commission? I mean, I would just say that was a really good discussion and um, thanks to both of you. It was a lot of new information and, and, and great. And I just say I agree with John if, the, if there's going to be work happening on um, Marinwood land, large projects in the future, it's a good idea to have it run through the commission. I think that sounds very sound. It makes sense that these went through quickly also. Um, but I just I kind of, you know, second that. Um, 
that it'd be great uh, for large scale projects to come through. Yeah, well, I, I don't disagree. My concern from my seat is again, uh, you know, we also have the fire commission, which certainly has a vested interest and opinion on this too, which is why I suggest, you know, a, a future uh, dual meeting because, you know, what might be thought of in this commission might have a 180 degree thought process uh, from the other commission. And I don't know that I'm comfortable being the person trying to say, well, here's where the Marinwood Park and Rec Commission is. Here's where the Marinwood Fire Commission is. And, you know, at some point, those two bodies are going to need to come together to understand each other's perspective. But, but I think that illustrates exactly why this commission should be involved, because if our goals are slightly different than the fire commission's goals, then we should come together to try and develop shared goals. Yeah. Well, and John, that might be a good city project, too, is to... Uh, outline, uh, you know, what those goals of this commission are, because I don't know that that's necessarily clear as it relates specifically to this measure and this initiative. Well, I mean, the goals of this commission, I, I actually don't know them, but I'm assuming that there's some statement about protection of open space. Sure, sure. But uh, it could be argued that uh, uh, these fire prevention measures do protect the open space. Those are my, that's my point. You know, uh, you know, oh, I, I mean that that could be interpreted a lot of different ways. If that, you that is if exactly if you're my point. Clear cutting a two hundred foot swath of open space, you could argue that's not protecting the open space. Right. Right. Well, I don't think anybody's proposing that anyway. But, well, that, but no, but that well, that's what dis defensible space is in a lot of ways. It's re removing a significant portion of vegetation from behind homes of 100 feet, but they are being proposed more than 100 feet now because of the heightened awareness of, you know, fire danger. So yeah. that... Yeah, I haven't seen any projects or proposals that... Uh, yeah. ...that suggest clear cutting. <coughs> uh, yeah, to your point. Um, but again, I think that that's why it's important to get the two groups to, together. Right. Any other thoughts or questions? Okay. I would now ask for any public comment on you. Yeah, you don't have any. No comment? Okay, well, thank you. Um, this is obviously something we'll spend some time with in the future trying to uh, figure out their best practices. Um, moving on, we'll go to item number six, the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Mr. Fretwell. Thank you, John. Um, well, this last month, uh, we basically made the transition from summer to our fall season of programming for the rec department. And um, we put out our fall Marinewood review um, in late August, uh, highlighting the, the programs that we are currently offering. And we just did a digital version of the catalog this time around because there's so many things subject to change as the guidelines continue to be updated and uh, we figure out what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do. So uh, we just have our digital catalog that we have on our website and we send out updates um, as needed. Um, the guidelines still prohibit a lot of our normal indoor uh, recreation programming right now. Um, so staff has been working hard to get creative and find um, ways to utilize more and more of our outdoor space um, where there's more allowance for, for people to um, take classes and do programs. So we have actually have a lot of new programs this fall um, that we're really excited about that are all up and running or starting this week, um, including uh, um, we have a, a youth um, sports camp for two different age groups that, that introduced um, uh, kids to a bunch of different sports activities, um, which has been going really well this last uh, few weeks. We have a new golf program um, that'll be taking place starting this Thursday out in the, in the park. And um, we have a music class for children that's taking place um, out on the grass as well. And so that's, it's been fun to be able to find some uh, outdoor programs and hopefully the weather continues to cooperate um, you know, with rain or with smoke uh, to be able to keep these classes uh, going throughout the fall since we are so restricted on indoor space. Um, we, are, we are running our after school program 
uh, and it's a, it's a little bit limited um, due to the guidelines and how many kids we're able to take, but we do have a, uh, that program has been running since the school, um, school year started and we will be starting a um, smaller version of our preschool uh, program, sort of a preschool camp. We'll be starting up in a few weeks um, until we resume our more traditional preschool program um, once uh, things sort of normalize with school and with classrooms and, and being able to offer that program a little bit along the more traditional lines. So we're, um, staff have been busy getting all that all that up and running and going. We have um, some of our regular classes like tennis uh, for youth and adults is going on. Um, we've got some virtual classes like the Zumba, Pilates, uh, or photography class have all been going strong for, for a while now. And so um, we're gonna keep those going. Um, so that's been um, on the programming side it's been great to get a lot of those programs off the ground and, and, and they've all been uh, fairly popular uh, at, with enrollment. So we're excited about that. Um, special events are, are a little bit um, tricky right now. Group gatherings are prohibited for the most part. And um, Susan Press, who's sort of our, um, our, our art director, who has been uh, helping us put on the art show the past several years, uh, has put together a virtual art show um, that, that we're gonna be rolling out in the coming weeks. I um, believe it'll be um, probably mostly based on Facebook and we'll be sending out information. But um, this is the third um, installment of the art show that they can't uh, take place physically after fires last fall um, and then uh, with the shelter in place this spring, um, Susan's trying to find a way to finally let these artists uh, have an outlet to showcase these pieces. A lot of them put together specifically for the Marinwood Art Show. And so uh, while we can't uh, have people come and gather in the room and, and do it that way, we're gonna be showcasing them uh, online and we'll, we'll be um, announcing those details uh, pretty soon. So we're excited to at least be able to do that. As far as um, other events, we're working with other agencies in Marin and uh, talking with the County Health Department to be able to find out what sort of Halloween related events we might be able to get away with and, and be how we can um, get creative with, with some of those things to be able to bring the community together uh, for some of the traditional events we'd like to do, even if we can't do them in the traditional way. So we'll continue to announce um, uh, some of this stuff as we are able to finalize the details and um, staff are just trying to you know, put things together and figure out what we're, what we're able to do um, as far as that goes. Uh, Lap Swim is still going strong at the pool. Uh, we've been open since uh, July offering Lap Swim reservations. We have um, every time slot has basically been selling out uh, since we opened and we, we offer about 30, uh, 30 swimmers are able to use the pool per day and that's been going great and we're continuing that through the end of October. So we've extended the season a little bit to accommodate that demand and try to um, make up for, for lost time with a short pool season. And um, the Marinwood Water Devils um, were able to start practice um, just last week, which is uh, going really well. They've, they're practicing in the evenings in a limited capacity and they'll be continuing through the end of October and the first, first week of November. So um, that's been great to see the kids be able to come in and use the pool and see the coaches out there. And uh, they've put together a, a good way of holding practice while um, following all of the, the health guidelines and keeping everybody uh, sort of distant and safe and sanitized. And so, um, that's been going going really well so far, and uh, we're excited to be able to continue to offer programs at the pool um, in spite of the circumstances. So um, the rec staff has been busy keeping all of that uh, up and running and figuring all of that out. Um, on the park maintenance uh, side of things, we um, I just uh, you saw in my report just wanted to acknowledge the park staff. Uh, it's been a really a uh, tricky year for, for everyone everywhere in every industry, um, but uh, our, our guys have been um, just doing a stellar job of, of handling all of the, the strange circumstances, being outside in the smoke, being outside um, with masks on, uh, trying to, to keep up with um, keeping the facilities looking clean and, and maintained while um, having some of these added uh, burdens that, that come with the COVID-19 uh, situation and with the, with the air quality. And they have just, um, had amazing attitudes, uh, great work ethic, just haven't complained, just adapted really well. And I've um, just been very pleased with them. So I want to just give them a little shout out and, and a thank you for um, just rolling with a very strange season and, and working hard to, to keep up our facilities and grounds um, in spite of um, a, a lot of extra challenges this year. So just want to put that out there. Um, 
We are continuing uh, work on, on pr preparing the parks maintenance facility for demolition, uh, getting things cleaned out. We will have um, our temporary workspace set up um, in the next couple weeks um, at the edge of the park, and we're working on making that transition. Um, and right now, one of the main projects that the crew is working on is just rehabilitating the, the turf um, in the three parks and around the community center after the summer, um, which they're, they're currently in the middle of. Um, and uh, yeah, some upcoming projects. Um, we'll uh, be working on a couple pieces of equipment that need to be um, dealt with in the, in the pump room. We need to replace a chlorine generator. And uh, they'll be doing some work around the community center, leveling some of the patios that have become sort of rolling from, um, there's a debate whether it's tree roots or a uh, mole activity, but we'll be um, working on getting those a little bit straightened out um, amongst other things. Um, does anyone have any questions about uh, the Parks Direct report? One small and yeah. is it economical to keep pool open even a little? The reason I ask is, um, in I live in San Francisco, South Mission Bank pool is open pretty late into the year. It's cold and windy, and it's always full. So I don't know if that's something that you guys have looked at or considered, or if it's economical to do it. Yeah, um, we have. Uh, we've actually been open year round. Um, in I think there's one one infamous season uh, that we that we did a whole year that. Um, it's it's not economical or um, uh, to to keep the pool open year round for Marin Woods demand. Um, our we do have a, a small um, loyal following of of diehard lap swimmers that will come rain or shine, you know, snow, whatever. Um, but a lot of our users are very you know what's very weather dependent, and um, the pool is extremely expensive to heat in the winter months. Um, it's expensive to, um, yeah, that's, the, that's probably the biggest cost associated. And we'd have days where we would have one swimmer a day come to use the pool and we'd have to staff it with two lifeguards minimum um, for, that, for that entire time that we say we're open, uh, continue to keep the pool heated and chlorinated and, and all of that. And so it is very costly without a larger user base uh, to, to do that. So um, we do look at, you know, the demand in, in the pool user groups and um, each year as we look at the season and, and uh, we've shifted the season several times just to sort of try to make the most of who's using the pool when. But um, uh, yeah, I, I was extending the season right now um, as just in a strange season with us not starting until July. We're just trying to, you know, make up for some lost time. And um, while we happen to have a staff that are able to work as well is another factor that gets, gets tricky in the winter. But um, but it's something that we do continue to, to look at and, and consider, um, so. Yeah, yeah, we're also, I think, I just saw a news report, we're officially in a La Nina, which weather pattern, that the rains don't come early this year. So if it is, you know, if we're selling out of lap swim, you know, I don't know, just, just something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And we haven't ruled anything out at this point. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, I'd say one of our primary concerns. So as the temperatures go down, that's when, when we start to see a, a change in our, our heating costs, um, you know, regardless of, of rain, just the air temperature, but also uh, staffing becomes a, a big issue um, when we get a little later in the season as a, as a lot of our um, staff end up get, going to school or whatever version of school they're doing right now. So, uh, but yeah, that, we haven't ruled anything out. We're, we're definitely looking at that as we continue through the, through the fall. Anything else, Luke? Uh, nothing for me. Is uh, anyone else have anything, any questions about my report? No, sure. thank you. Nope. Thank you. I would also ask uh, any public comment on uh, park maintenance, recreation? Nothing from the public? Okay, then moving on, uh, items of interest for future agenda items. Ann or John? Um, I think, you know, just s stating what I said earlier, I'd just like to keep informed on future projects and processes for the, for the fire projects, but nothing else. No, I, I, I agree to that, and I think that uh, there can be several differences of opinions when it comes to 
what is what is right and what is wrong as far as that kind of maintenance. So it's you know, it'll be good to have a kind of a sound direction to move forward in. Well, if there's nothing else, then I would uh, seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll give the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good month, guys. <laughs> See you next month. Bye. Right. Good night. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Uh, you and I should touch base soon. I can stop by Friday. I, in the office. I should be around. Let me know uh, a good time. I'll text you. Good night. Thanks. All right. Yeah. You got it.